Hi everyone, Tim the Plain Man here and welcome to Plain Time, Plain Follow Setup Edition. This is how to set up Plain Follow using my Artipilot Lua Script addition to Artipilot on a Artipilot based fixed wing aircraft. Now fixed wing could include a VTOL. The follow mode only applies during fixed wing flight mode, but you can always take off in VTOL mode and land in VTOL mode. But I'm going to be doing it using this Atom RC Beluga that I just received. If you want to see the unboxing, here it is. And you will see in that unboxing the plan for how I was going to set up the plane. Now I'll show you how I really set it up, set up the existing planes. What we're going to do now is we're going to set this up, this plane up to run the Lewis script for plain follow. So what we need is first of all, the information in my PR. So this is a PR for Autopilot, which is a pull request and it's a set of proposed changes to Autopilot because I've written this as, a, as an applet so that it, in the long run, it should be able to be downloaded as a standard from Autopilot. And there's a couple of C++ changes required, which means that you need a custom build of the Autopilot firmware in order to be able to run plain follow. Link in the description to the PR. The PR has, you know, all the, the, the C code required. It gets rebased quite regularly on master 4.7. And the, the scripts that you need to load are included in the PR. But first of all, before you do that, you've got to actually turn on scripting. So here we have the script enable parameter in Autopilot. And you need to turn that on by setting it to one and updating it. You know, I really like this new interface that they've added in the mission planner. When you go to write your parameters, it prompts you uh, to say, these are the values that you're about to write. Are you sure you want to do it? Kind of like that, actually. I think it's quite good, right? So th that will update the parameters and okay. So what we need to do is we need to change the SCRBM I count. Don't worry about what it means. If you care about it, go have a look. And the heap size also needs to be set. So 250123 and 200123. Now it thinks something's changed. Two parameters saved and a reboot is required. So what we need to do now is load the Lua scripts required for plane follow into the scripts folder on the flight controller. This can be done by, you can take the SD card out of the plane and do it by loading it on the computer, or you can use nav FTP to upload. As you can see, there are no scripts there right now. And what we're going to do is load by uploading and I have the scripts that I need set up uh, over here in my Artipilot scripts folder. And the main one that I want is called plain follow. So let's upload plain follow into the scripts folder. Now, the one thing that I've done, which is, um, you know, you might see it as overcomplicating things, but uh, I see it as, as organizing things and thinking big. So instead of just putting everything into one Lua script, I've broken it out into several Lua scripts, the main script for follow, and then some other kind of auxiliary or utility scripts that can be reused for other things. So several of those are in the PR and they need to go under the scripts folder into a sub folder of scripts called modules. So what we'll do is once this is finished, and it's almost done. We will create a folder and it's going to be called modules. And in the modules folder, what we will do is we will upload the modules and the modules that we want are attitude, speed, PID, command, int, this one, and also Mavlink Messages. So Mavlink Messages is a standard script. 
it's a standard module that's available on the IDPilot GitHub. I'll provide the link to where you get the, the proper version of it. So it's a standard module and I'm just using that as well. So let's just load those scripts up. Okay, so they're loaded. Now, what should happen, what we need to do now is we need to reboot the flight controller so that those scripts will start. Flight controller comes up. As you can see, it's loaded the speed pit controller, the attitude and the command in script. And that's perfect. 4.7.0 versions. The speed pit controller is 4.6.0. There it is loaded. So what that means now is if I go and get the parameters that are now running on the flight controller in, in, as well as the, all the existing standard parameters, there should be some scripting parameters for plane follow. There's some other parameters that we need to set first because the scripting plane follow uses the standard follow module that's already part of RD Pilot, mostly used in Copter and I think Rover maybe. And all those parameters start with F-O-L-L -L, and without this fall enable, none of the scripting follow will work because it uses the core follow code that's in the RD Pilot, that's built into RD Pilot. So once I enable follow, all right, so we need to set some standard parameters here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to use terrain following, which is not a standard parameter. Notice that the values that it gave were just absolute and relative. Well, I've added three terrain following for terrain. We want to set the maximum distance for a plane. This is set for copters and for a plane, something at least like 500 meters makes a lot more sense. The offset type is we always want to really be following the lead vehicle. Um, and so that's option one rather than um, northeast down. Um, so the offset type would be in uh, in kind of earth frame, this is basically saying we want to we want to literally follow the 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 rel the the offset vehicle. What I like to do is just to start with is give it a nice wide berth for the x y. Whoops, x should, needs to be minus fifty to fly behind the vehicle. If you if it's fifty, it's going to fly in front of the vehicle that's following. It sounds a little weird, but technically it. It can be done. And Z, I always like to give it a Z or a difference in altitude until we get everything right so we don't hit the other plane. Uh, positive means fly below. So just to keep things safe, I'll have it fly above. Actually, no, I want it, I want it, to, be, I want it to be below. So I'm going to fly 50 meters up. Follow options. Well, when I have a mount, I do want it to follow the lead vehicle. And... This is, the, in a sense, the most important parameter here. This is the system ID, the sys ID, this MAV, of the target vehicle. This is um, a case where you have to know about sys ID, this MAV, which is the MAVLINK ID of, the, of each individual plane. For many use cases, you don't really need to set this, and you don't need to care. But for this one, you need to know this is the plane that I'm flying, and this is going to be... Uh, vehicle number 50 and that's the vehicle that I'm following and that's going to be vehicle number 22 because that's going to be the white shark so these are the values that I'm going to set here parameter saved and this vehicle instead of the default of 1 I'm going to set it to 50 and the reason I set it to 50, honestly, is because when I started creating models in my TX16S uh, transmitter, it started number, numbering the models. Uh, Open HTX has sort of stopped doing that, and it's under the covers now, but still, I kind of kept track of that, and I use that for model match when I'm matching my receiver to my transmitter, and it just seems easier to say, when I'm using model match, um, I'll set my receiver up to be number 50. I'll also set my sys ID 
this map up to be 50 so it keeps it easier to keep it in track so that's oh and it failed to set oh it failed to set this id this map and it's not that it failed it's that once you set it then it thinks it's a different vehicle so it gets confused and let's uh disconnect and reconnect because otherwise it just doesn't know what it's doing Notice it's now come up as COM950 fixed wing, where it was COM91 fixed before. Oops, somehow it's decided that's a camera. I'm going to go for the fixed wing. Let's go get that. All right, we should have our follow parameters all set. Now we do alt type 3, follow distance 500, follow enable, offset type is 1. Uh, we're going to follow 50 meters behind the lead vehicle and 10 meters below, and we're going to follow vehicle number 22. Now, the follow script parameters are all prefixed with ZPF. It's a standard that I'm using with my scripts because I find it um, awkward if, this, if the script parameters are scattered all the way amongst the other parameters. So I always start my script parameters with Z for a script, um, all my Z, like ZTA for terrain avoidance, um, ZPF, I've got a ZAR for arming, etc. And I've also, I'm going to renumber some of my older scripts so that I start using this parameter. And ZPF is plain follow. So you notice if I do anything with Z now, um, that's going to basically pull up all the scripting parameters that are loaded on the plane. Right now we only have ZPF for follow. Now we have a, an activation function set uh, for 301 to enable follow. That's going to have to be set as a particular function on the transmitter, which I think we're probably going to have to set up. Oh, it's this one. Currently labeled turtle. Okay. So that's channel 7. So I've set channel 7 up my transmitter to be my script so what I need to do is to go to RC7 and set that option to be 301 so that now I can use that switch to turn on the follow and we'll go back to as ZPF and in here, I have several parameters that are really important and then some other parameters that are somewhat optional. Most of the parameters here are designed to be, you know, the defaults are good, but they're there so you can tune things. So, for example, what I have done is I've set my exit mode and my fail mode to be loiter. Exit mode means when you flip the switch to go into follow mode, what happens when you flip the switch to go out of follow mode? It's going to RTL. If the follow plane loses track of the, um, for example, loses telemetry, gets too far away, gets further than the 500 meters away from the target vehicle, what's going to happen? It's going to fail follow. What's it going to do? It's going to do 12, which is loiter. And that can be overridden. In the, uh, the MD file, the documentation that is part of the PR, there's all of this information about what you need to do and how you need to set things up is already set up and is already explained. Um, there's detailed information about the parameters, so I won't really go through those. Um, and pretty much all I'm going to do is talk about what you need to set here, which is, uh, you know, should be by default, maybe nothing. The only one that I really like to set is, um, is instead of following the target plane's altitude, you don't need to, but you can set a def an, an override, an altitude override, so that regardless of what altitude the target plane is flying, this plane is going to fly at a fixed, certain fixed altitude. So you could put that in here as an altitude override. That may be one thing that you might want to change. Otherwise, there's really nothing in here that you really need to change. I am going to stick with that. I'm going to basically say, well, there could be this one here, wide turns. When the first plane is following the second plane and the other one plane does a turn, do we want to do a turn right around on the outside or do we want to cut the corner and try to keep close? 
And so you might want to set wide turns to be zero. Um, it means it's going to follow a little bit more closely around a around a, a turn, and maybe that's you know one thing you might want to adjust. Otherwise, most of these defaults are around tuning the follow code, and the defaults are good. Read the instructions, try it, um, maybe try it in Siddle and uh, before you fly. And then if you have some feedback, absolutely let me know. I'm really keen to hear any feedback you have, positive, negative questions, let me know. I really wanna know what you wanna, um, what you can tell me to help me improve this and make it uh, really work. So I'm not sure if you can hear, but just in the distance in the other room, I have the white shark powered on with a sick telemetry radio in it. And it's um, beeping away because it's, um, you know, it has the motors connected and it doesn't have um, a safety switch and stuff. So it just does that. But what I can do now recovered. is I can fire Mercury up this plane Manual flight mode. and if we just wait for a second for the Raspberry Pi to come up and um, then as soon as that does come up then we should have a connection we can get a UDP connection because you notice I've disconnected the telemetry radio from the computer now because I want the two planes to talk to each other and I want to show you how that looks when you have the two planes connected so it's up now and as you can see here it is Artie Pilot is connecting automatically to the UDP feed that's coming up from the Raspberry Pi it's going to load parameters and you can see that it's connected to via UDP to 50 which is what we set the SysID this MAV to this vehicle to 50 but guess what we also have vehicle number 22 which is the white shark and interestingly, because the white shark is connected to this vehicle by a telemetry, and this vehicle is connected to the computer, I can actually connect to the white shark through this vehicle. I'm gonna have the white shark up in the air, flying around, and then the idea is that I fly this vehicle as the chase vehicle to follow the other plane. All right, so, um, you know, this, this is really quite magic how this works. So now I have my mission planner on this plane connected to this plane and this plane connected to that plane and I can look at both planes. I can switch over to 50 and guess what? Now it's showing me over here and it's showing me my airspeed sensor. Okay, etc. That's this plane here. If I switch back to the one over there It's in the middle of the ocean and the airspeed sensor is running, but if I blow, nothing happens because that's the airspeed sensor in the other plane. All right, so that's it. That's uh, how to set up plane follow. And what needs to happen next is, well, you're gonna have to get someone else to come out and fly the other plane. I'm gonna have to do that. And I should be able to do that, well, Check out the weather, it's a bit cold outside. It's gonna be like that for a few more days. I'm hoping this weekend, but most likely next weekend, um, I can maiden this plane, and then if all goes well, have this plane follow that plane. And if it goes really, really well, I'll put my HD0 my gimbal camera on there, and get some uh, FPV footage of this plane getting nice and close and cozy and ideally you know I'm, i've got it 50 meters apart that's not formation flight i want to do formation flight i want to be able to fly it within maybe 10 meters and get some really good chase follow video of this plane following that plane and i think it's going to be pretty awesome tim the plane man over and out